Yes, yes. I'm here with Dodgy Dave, and we're gonna get this thing over five gigahertz. Yes. Woo! So you wanna upgrade that Windows Home to Windows Pro, or just get killer prices on Windows Office 2016 and cheap gaming keys? Head on down to 09. Make sure you copy and paste my code from the description to get a price that's gonna make you go woo! All right, so let's see how we can overclock this. What is this motherboard? This is the ROG Maximus X Formula. This actually has um, water cooling on the motherboard for the um, VRMs. For the VRMs. So this is top, top of the line. And I will say, if you want to overclock, I reckon ROG boards or actually ASUS boards are the best. They have the best VRMs and also most importantly they update their bios the most so if you buy one of their top end motherboards they will update it for a really long time even when the new motherboards come out they still update it where the other manufacturers they don't do that in general um, hey i never said that you said that um anyway let's see let's get this up to five gigahertz uh no we'll go to 5.2 let's see so First of all, we want to do the XMP profile. So you press delete to get into your BIOS when you boot up, obviously. And first we want to change the uh, overclock tuner there to XMP so we can get the memory up to 300 megahertz. 3000 megahertz, sorry. All right, so we're going to save that back out and come back in again. All right, so we have booted back in to the BIOS after setting the XMP profile. And if you look on the right hand side, you'll see that the memory is actually three gigahertz or 3000 megahertz now, 1.360 volts. Now we wanna go to a Zeus multi-core enhancement, turn that off. Disable that, go down, go to AVX offset. Now you do wanna set this, we'll leave it on zero for now because we wanna keep the constant clock, but you do wanna set this to about 300 to 500 megahertz because you will not be able to make your PC AVX stable at the same clock speeds as what you want. Say for example, you wanna overclock to five gigahertz, probably with AVX, you'll probably be only be able to get 4.7 so that means any application that starts up with avx it'll just back off that clock to the offset you set here but i'm going to leave it for zero for now now we want to set the cores so we want to sync them sync all cores together because we want all the cores to be the same speed okay uh, we put it to 5.2 we know this uh, cpu does 5.2 um, yours may not do 5.2 just try 5 gigahertz first because if you haven't deleted it, it'll be a struggle to reach 5 gigahertz. But, but this actually did 5.2 straight out of the box. Yes, this this was Before unusual, we... this CPU. It actually did do 5.2, didn't it? Straight out of the box. Now, I, that is very unusual. Um, usually, it'll be a struggle to reach 5 gigahertz. It'll be into the hundreds or like it'll be in high 90s or whatever. So if you want to get the maximum out of this chip, you do need to delete it. So single cores, we're going to put that to... what? what now, so we want to put the CPU limit there to 52. So we synced all cores, now go to 52. Okay, go down. So for you, you should start at five gigahertz, but I'm starting at 5.2. Now we want to go to CPU SVID support and we want to disable that. Then we want to go to external digi power control. So we want to set the CPU line calibration load to level six. That is probably the best level to set it to. Level seven it might be a bit too much. Just do level six. Back out of that. Then we want to go to the internal CPU power management. And then we set the long duration to its maximum. So just put 999 or five or whatever, just max it out. And then go to short duration, do the same, max it out. Back out of that. Then we go to the CPU core cache current limit max. And we set that to the maximum. Then we want to go into the minimum CPU cache ratio and the maximum CPU cache ratio. Set that to 42. Start with that. 43, maybe. Just try 42 to start with. Now, this is the important part. Now here we want to go to uh, CPU core cache voltage. So now this is the important part. How much voltage do you need to um, 
keep your CPU up. Now, obviously, you want the minimum amount of voltage, but actually, these motherboards are really good, these ASUS motherboards. So we're going to leave it on auto for now. Then we're going to do manual later. But for now, try auto first, okay? And then that would probably give you the minimum amount of um, voltage you need. But we'll set it to auto. We're going to save this now. So let's leave it auto, but then later we'll show you how to change it to um, whatever voltage you want. So let's go and save this now. Let's go to tools. And we'll save this in the overclocking profile. Just rename it and call it Dodgy Daves. Woo! 5 gigahertz, 5.2 gigahertz. Woo, woo, woo! Yes, get on the woo train. All right, so there we go. All right, so save that. We're going to boot up and see. If it's stable, we'll just use Cinebench just for a quick test. Really, you want to run Prime 95 for an hour or so. I'll... All right, look at that. We got in. Now, if your computer crashes or freezes, then you want to go into the manual voltage settings and see how much we need to keep it up. But um, generally, uh, we've left this on auto. And let's see if it can run Cinebench. So if we bring up the temperatures. Now, this thing here is an absolute beast. I will show you this um desktop it is a beast the best you can buy pretty much the best gaming rig 1080 ti the best motherboard 8700 delittered and it's overclocked to 5.2 now not many go to 5.2 believe me uh and let's just run cinebench get the temperatures up too maybe uh if you open up ada 64 we'll get the temps up all right so what do we got up here 31 degrees at the all right so we've got 31 degrees now Depending on what all-in-one cooler you're using, this is custom water cool. So this is custom water cooling, not just on the CPU, it's on the GPU, and it's more importantly custom cooling the VRMs. Now, these have the best VRMs. These can pump in nearly double the amount of wattage. Uh, have we got the AVX offset on? So as you can see now, because we have it on auto, it doesn't keep a constant 5.2 gigahertz. But that's good, right? So that's five gigahertz running Cinebench. Now let's run that again. Now what temperatures we would get? Okay, now but but look at the clock speed there. The clock speed is going up and down, which is what you want. Also, we have the voltage going up and down. It's not a constant voltage, and it's not a constant five gigahertz because you don't need that. You don't want it to be five gigahertz all the time. And if you have a constant voltage, maybe you need like 1.42 volts. Why have that pumping into your CPU all the time? It's going to cause volt, voltage droopage over time. Uh, it will need more power, more voltage over time to keep it up at the same um, frequency. So this is good. As you can see, we're running the Cinebench here. And um, what's the temperatures get to? 63. Yep. And it goes to 5.2 all cores only when you need it, right? So it doesn't have to stay 5 gigahertz all the time. That is the genius of this auto setting. Now, sometimes you might want it to run at 5.2 all the time. Well, that's fine. You, then you're going to have to go in and mess around with your voltage there and put a permanent voltage where it's going to stay all the time and it's going to keep that CPU up. Uh, I think it'd be about 1.43 on this it takes to keep it up at 5.2, but that's brilliant. All right, so now we're going to go in here. Auto wouldn't work for 5.4, so we're going to go manual. We're going to go to 1.55. Go 1.55. 1.52. It's not red. 1.525. Try that. Because it wouldn't work before 1.5, right? Now, you don't ever want to try these temperatures at home. I mean, this voltage at home. 1.25. Try. 1.25. Did that just back down when you went to 5, did it? Um yeah, 1.52 is the maximum. Okay, that's the maximum amount of voltage we can give unless you, you can actually unlock these things um, with a special key sometimes. But um, let's just say 1.52. This is just crazy amount of voltage. You never want to put this much voltage in. But we're just doing it for the team. For Team Woo, the Woo train. Woo, 5.4, baby. Now, we'll boot into 5.4, hopefully. <laughs> let's see. Oh, we know it should well, did with the other one. Yeah, I'll be very disappointed if this motherboard yeah, doesn't do it. Two hundred dollar board against a six hundred dollar board. Yes, oh. yes. Have a look at these. 
5.4 gigahertz beast mode. Now, actually, what right, look at this. In a 5.4 gigahertz. Before we just said we're it doing 60-some frames per second. Up, We've got overclocked 1080 Ti, overclocked CPU. Look, 56 degrees. What? What? 56 degrees. Yes, indeed. 56 degrees. 70 degrees on the CPU. <laughs> 5.4. Can you believe it? This is six cores at 5.4, all core burst. Well, no, we're not all core burst and we're only using 10% of the CPU, but all cores are synced at 5.4 gigahertz. Temperatures are well under control. Overclock 1080 Ti, 200, 2063 megahertz. Wow, doesn't get any better than this. And this will not be encoding stable, but have a look, have a look. You see it, but you don't believe it, but that is 5.4 gigahertz. Let's have a look. It's gonna crash. Oh, look at those fans kick in. Oh, it hasn't crashed yet. Boom, there you go. Do not try 5.4 5 at home. Yeah, it's not stable at 5.4 for encoding and stuff like that, but I can definitely game at 5.4, no problem. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Quick overclocking guide, hope you get something out of it. Until next time, guys, make sure you like, subscribe. This beast is actually for sale. We're just testing it before it goes out the door. And there's other PCs that the man has from Pimp My PC. I will leave links in the description when they go on sale. So catch you next one, guys. Tally ho.